Welcome to Friends Baptist Church this morning. We're so glad that you're here. If you're a first time guest, later on the service, we're gonna have an opportunity for you to raise your hand, receive a visitor card, fill that out. When the offering plate is passed later on the service, please put that in so we can have a record of your tenants. Everyone else, we're so glad that you're here and we want you to lift up your voice in song and praise. Let's honor the Lord Jesus Christ today because He is worthy. He is the reason we can gather and fellowship and enjoy one another's presence. God bless you. Enjoy the day. If you're a woman, raise your hand. Congratulations. You just met the first requirement to be a nursery worker here. And we would love to have you in our nursery. If you would like to be a part of that, please see Megan Pope or Deanne Osborne. And if you have a child that is zero to three years of age, our lovely nursery workers would love to be able to take care of your little baby while you enjoy our worship service. 
Our youth group is so excited to be going to Costa Rica this summer. We will be able to reach people with the gospel and we will be heavily involved in outreach in the area of Atenas. If you would like to help us get to Costa Rica, please see me after the service and I'll share with you many ways you can do so. During our summer months here at Friends Baptist Church, we have an opportunity called Summer Service, a time where we go out into our community, we in reach into our church, where we make phone calls, write letters, but there is something for everyone. I would encourage you as a member of Friends Baptist Church to come and be a part of our Summer Service Outreach on Sunday nights where we go out, wash windows, pay for people's clothes to be dried, we hand out flyers, we make phone calls, we contact people who have been missing. There is something for everyone to be involved. Please come and be a part of our summer service outreach. Thank you. Do you ever feel like you're just, you just cannot connect? Well, we've got the perfect solution. We've got the book of faces, we got the telegrams that are instant, and we got the tube of you. Stay connected, church. Hey, praise the Lord. Are you glad to be here this morning? Amen. Hey, let's stand together. Let's go to worship our Savior. What a wonderful song. We want Him to build our life. We want to build our life. Let's sing that. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Do you mean that? Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you.
trust that we can have in Jesus Christ and his word says we don't have to be afraid or or be dismayed because the Lord is with us and he goes before us and so when we live in a world where everything seems to just get us shaken but you don't have to be because we have his word and we can build on that firm foundation and love people around us what a great truth of God's word aren't you glad to be saved today amen, amen. praise the Lord you know, I love the altar song when you, you think about what we have. You know, we have an altar wherever. You can make your seat an altar. You can make this an altar. But the, the plea is come to the altar because that's where we do decisions, make decisions, and leave our burdens, our cares. So if you're hurting today, sing this song and know that Jesus cares for you as we lift up our voices. Let's join in song. Are you hurting and broken within? of your sin Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself Do you thirst for a drink from the well Jesus is calling Oh come to the altar
Amen. Aren't you excited to be in the Lord's house? Think about that song. The Father's arms are open wide. There is no religion in the world that can say that except for us. Thank God your salvation is not dependent on how good you are. Amen? But on how good He is. I'm super excited about the service today. Not only is the worship good, but guess what? The choir is getting ready to sing my favorite choir song. And if I shout a little bit and go running, don't pay any attention to me. Amen. You try to catch up. That's all I got to say. But we are excited that you're here. Do we have any first-time guests in the building? We want to recognize you. We want you to come up here and give a five-minute testimony. No, I'm just kidding. We have one right back there. Nobody's going to raise their hand now. I'm just kidding. We're not going to make you say a word, but we do want to get you a visitor card. Any other guests, ushers, if you see them, you catch them. Let's go ahead and pray and ask the Lord to bless the service. Father, we thank you so much for the fact that your arms are open wide. Lord, I'm thankful. No matter the past, no matter what I've done, no matter the sin, God, your, your grace can cover that. Lord, there's forgiveness. And if there be one in this place today, Lord, that does not know you as Savior, they don't know that. May they, may they realize today they need a Savior, that Jesus Christ loves them, that He paid that ultimate price, that His blood can cover their sin. We love you. We thank you. May you be honored and glorified today above all else. May no one stand in your glory but you alone. We love you. We thank you. Bless now the time that we have together in Jesus' name. Amen.
today. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ is the glory and the lifter of our head? Hey, would you stand together? Turn around and greet your neighbor. Tell him you're glad to see him here on a wonderful Sunday morning. of that we want to know so we can thank you for hey there pastor matt here and i'm one of the pastors here at friends baptist church and it is such a joy and privilege to be able to welcome you to our live stream today we pray that you're having a wonderful day and if this is your first time tuning in we want to have a record of that we want to know so we can thank you for tuning in and you can go to our church's website friendsbaptist.church slash guest and fill that out for us just so that we know that you are part of our live stream community today we're praying for you we hope you have a wonderful day enjoy this service and thank you for worshiping with us until we see you again have a wonderful day And praise the Lord. Go ahead and start making your way to your seats and let's remain standing. As a, as a child, I love this song as we sang it in church. 
we would sing Love Lifted Me and it was in Charlotte I believe it was in Charlotte and the whole congregation as they sang this song when they would sing li the lifted part they would, they would go up and so I just adopted that here at Friends and so let's stand together and let's sing that song Love Lifted Me here we go I was sinking deep in sin Far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me now safe. it was a seesaw like some of you go up some of you were down we're gonna sing that chorus again let's all go up on our feet as the ushers make their way forward let's sing that chorus one more time ready love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help Now we're going to receive our Sunday morning offering. And as you give to the Lord, realize 
that you're not giving to us, you're giving what he has given to you and blessed you with. And so this morning, I want to ask Brother Richard Wolford to ask God's blessing on the offering. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, good to see you. Hey, this is my buddy Joe. Man, praise the Lord for Joe. We've had a great time here at camp. So excited about what God's doing here. I can't wait to see Brother Alex. He's coming up next. You guys are going to love him. Man, it's so exciting. Great time here at Fort Bluff. We miss you. We love you. God bless you. This is my first time at Fort Bluff. I get to meet Joe, all these great guys. I, this phantom guy named Alex, and uh, we're having a great time. Thanks for supporting us, praying for us, and uh, glad we could come. I'm Blake Roscoe, and I learned that don't let don't let pride get um, in front of you. Like, take over you. My name's Gavin, and I learned not to let pride get in the way of you go into the altar or you talking to God. If God is pulling on your heart, don't pull to your side. Just follow Him. Hey, my name is Luke, and uh, having a great time at Fort Bluff. Oh, oh Matt, Matt, that's going a little too far, oh, Luke. Luke. Yeah. All right, Luke, I like, I like the action there. All right, Luke. Hi, my name is Chandler. I'm Connor. And this is our friend Joe. Joe the Bear. 
and uh, we've had a great experience at camp, and uh, we are we are counsel, counselors here, and uh, we, we've just been on fire for the Lord, and, and we just pray that, uh, that, that the kids will be on fire when they come back. My name is Jackson Beatty, and this is uh, Joe the Bear at the camp with the lodge, whatever it's called, and uh, last night's devotions I shared about treating stuff, treating each other, treating others respectfully. I learned to jump when God calls. My name is Garrett, and I learned that you can't let your pride get ahead of you and take over what really matters. So tell us what you're doing at camp, Dave. Yeah. I'm job shadowing right now. Yeah, see, Austin, Austin gets it. What's That's your hopes? Awesome. What do you want to do with that job shadow? Uh, eventually, uh, work here. Woo! Okay. All right, nice. Uh, you ready? Oh, eight, three, two, one. Hey, guys, look, we found a phantom, Alex Pryor. Praise the Lord. Man, we're having a great time with Brother Alex here at Fort Bluff. Look, Joe is looking at you, Alex. Praise the Lord. Man, what do you got to say for yourself, Brother Alex? The food is awful. Oh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Man, great to see you guys. Appreciate your prayers. Alex needs a lot of them right now. Praise the Lord. Love you guys. Miss you. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It was a great time at camp, and uh, um, man, I tell you what, many hearts were moved, and you know, convictions and callings uh, were placed down at camp, and you know, our theme uh, this year was uh, uh, momentum, and uh, you know, like in a game, uh, you know, that's when the, the, the momentum changes is when the team, you know, starts to really move and you see uh uh you know uh, a little change in the in the in the game plan because you know people are starting to move and and this week uh, you know uh it really uh god really moved he get he give us all the tools but you know this week we felt the holy ghost just come through and sweep us away and take us to uh to uh, new levels uh, you know, in our walk with him. And I've I seen some great things happen this week. And, uh, you know, there are going to be a few of them that's going to come up and share. But I just want to, you know, tell you a little bit about what I saw and how God moved. And I've seen young men, uh, you know, uh, to surrender to some callings that God placed on their life. But there's this one special guy. I'm just telling you, it was it was amazing uh, to see because about a year and a half ago, man, this guy hardly would even talk to me. I mean, you know, he would kind of stay away and uh, wouldn't say a whole lot to me and uh, just kind of sit, sit aside. But, you know, we had a room inside our room. It was probably 15, uh, 15 or 16 of us. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we had a service in the morning. We had a service in the evening. And uh, we would have devotions. Brother Nathan, I tell you what, he set the table uh, there when I got there because I got there on Tuesday night. But this young man who would barely speak to me a year and a half ago, he closed us in prayer two nights. And this wasn't a little. Yeah, it was not just a little one-liner. Uh, he, uh, he said it, and everybody in the room looked and said, what just happened? And uh, so that's just how special it was. It was a special time. We seen that. Uh, uh, we seen God move in a mighty way. And I want them to come and share their heart with you uh, on what God 
uh, did today or, or this past week. So I'm going to ask one at a time to come up. Now, the one that asked not to come first, you know, he's going to get called out first because he asked that. So I'm, I'm going to call him out first. Uh, Brother Garrett, would you step up? Uh, <laughs> Come on, Brother Garrett. Yeah, yeah, Garrett. Come on, Garrett. Yeah, Garrett, Garrett. So you're not going to come up? What in the world? I mean, really. Come on, Brother Garrett. Now it's your time. Your time to shine. Come on. All right. Next up, then, if Brother Garrett's not going to come up and share, I'm going to ask Brother Chandler if he'll come up and uh, speak real fast. Uh, I had a really great experience at camp, and, and I went last year, and, and it just it really changed my life, and I've been on fire for the Lord ever since. And uh, this year, God has called me into the student ministry, and uh, the reason I want to go into the student ministry is because I don't want to be confined to one group of kids. I want to teach all ages. I want to teach all, all ages of kids and every kid. And uh, God has called me and put the place that on my heart, and, uh, and I'm, I'm just on fire for the Lord now. Praise the Lord, Brother Chandler has been doing really good, and he felt led to uh, get into the youth ministry, but God called, told him there, don't be confined to a certain age group. He wanted to step out in faith and do some great things, and Brother, I know God's going to use you in a mighty way, so I'm most thankful for Brother Chandler. Uh, next up, we got a young one. Uh, man, I tell you what, uh, we've seen some big changes for, for him at camp. Uh, I'm going to invite Brother Gavin, if he would step up and uh, uh, share a little bit with us. Um, this was my first year going to camp, and uh, I didn't expect, like, too much. But when I got there, I was overwhelmed with how great it was, how great the sermons were, and they really spoke to me, and God spoke to me through my heart. And he put me on the altar, and he told me that he wanted me to be a youth pastor. Man, I was just telling you, so to hear that and to see you know, uh, a church that really, you know, where God's calling people to be in ministry. I'm going to just tell you, young people, this is what we need. This is the future. You know, so we need more to step up, and God's calling us. And I tell you what, he placed many calls out there. So very grateful for Brother Gavin, man. It was an awesome time this week. So um, I want to see, is any other young man want to uh, share a testimony uh, while he's here? Brother Garrett, are you ready now? Oh, look at here. Man, brother... Brother Garrett. <laughs> that future brother in law is getting you. Huh? Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I thought it was fun, and I learned a lot about how you can't let your pride get ahead of you and stuff like that. And, yeah. A man of few words, but I love Brother Garrett. I tell you what, he is doing well. Uh, and uh, so there was a couple young ladies that had uh, some, some things that was pressed on them, but I'm going to ask them if uh, they would come up and uh, share with you uh, just a couple words. Uh, so I'll ask first uh, Miss Kayla. You came out first, right? You're the oldest. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I'm the younger twin, but anyway, uh, I had a great time at camp. Um, it was really good to getting con to connect with some of the younger kids that are coming up uh, to our youth group. Oh, sorry, we had a great time, um, and it was just awesome, right? We had another mountaintop experience. I can't wait for Camp 2020, and we're leaving for Costa Rica tomorrow, so I'm really pumped about that one. So, Caitlin. knew that one was coming. <laughs> All right, so this was my fifth year going to camp, so I was, I was pumped and ready. I knew what was coming. Um, so uh, the uh, pastor talked a lot about counterculture and, um, you know, going against what our, uh, our culture is saying. 
And uh, so I, that resonated with me a lot. And uh, I think uh, the big thing that I took back from camp is just being really bold um, and to just step out more. Um, and so, yeah, had a great time and uh, loved uh, getting to know uh, our girls a lot better. So, yeah. Praise the Lord. And, and you know, one thing about camp, uh, it's really, you know, we take teenagers, but I'm going to tell you right now, really, it's, the, it's, the, it's one of my favorite times of the year. It's really something that all adults should go. I mean, I know I come back and I am hurting. You know, I mean, I moved things I hadn't moved all year. I played softball, man, and Brother Greg was on fire. And, I mean, I went five for five in two games. And I had an inside the park home run. So you know I hit the ball really far because from – oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it was. But I tell you what, it was a price paid when I got, uh, got off that bus yesterday. Or actually out of the truck because – I was very sore. But uh, I want to call another couple up that, that really, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, he set the table for us at camp. Man, when he, I got there, uh, the room, the guys, they were just, you know, all about what God was doing there. And I didn't get there until Tuesday. So I want to invite them up, though, as a couple, if they would, Brother Nathan and Miss Heather. I greatly appreciate you guys. <clears throat> Stand over here. Just in case God calls me to preach, I'm going to stand behind you. <laughs> um, well, I feel very humbled and very unworthy, honestly, to be standing in front of you today. Um, Heather and I, we both grew up in Christian homes. My dad was actually a missionary with Word of Life. I don't know if you've heard of that ministry. Um, but uh, Heather's parents, our mom especially, was very faithful in church. And um, both of us received Christ as um, almost young teenagers. Um, but it wasn't until September 7th of 2017, which feels like yesterday, but it, uh, it, um, it really was a year and a half ago almost. And that I think we both really committed our lives fully to Christ. And I think that committing your life fully to Christ is not something you feel in your heart. It's something that you commit to doing. It's a decision that you make. And um, that's what happened to us. For about three years, I was in banking and finance for 20 years. And for about three years prior to my, my end day at the bank, um, I, every day when I went to work, the story of Jonah and running away from God and uh, not doing really what God wanted me to do, one day impacted me so hard that I called Heather, who's a stay-at-home mom, um, homeschooling our kids, and I said, you know what, today I think I'm going to turn in my two weeks' notice. And, um, you know, instead of, the, the response that I expected was, are you crazy? Um, what are you thinking? You're the only income for our family. How are we going to eat? Whatever. And um, I got these words. I got, um, it's probably been a long time coming. We'll be fine. And with that, I picked up the phone, I called my boss. Um, I said, I don't expect you to understand. Um, I really just have to give my life to God right now and, uh, and I'm gonna walk away from banking, <clears throat> which was my security, which was my income, which was everything that provided um, benefits and support to our kids and, and uh, gave us the ability. And I walked away from banking that day and said, God, I don't know where you have for me, and trust me, I'm not asking you guys to make that kind of a decision. Probably kind of a counterculture. <laughs> you know, you don't make decisions like that. Um, but I walked away from banking that day and went home. And two weeks, I don't know what it, what it was about two weeks, but I told God, I said, I'm not going to seek a job. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to figure out um, anything about trying to gain an income for two weeks. And I went basically down to the library almost every day. And a downtown, brand new, beautiful library. You can plug in all your devices and uh, get on the Wi-Fi. It's great. I looked over downtown, and I just began to study my Bible and pray and say, God, what do you want for me? And for two, what, two weeks, that's where I gave my eight-hour day. And those two weeks, um, it wasn't until Thursday, I think it was a Thursday, that day, I got a text. It was two weeks to the day. And it said, uh, 
Well, I won't tell you everything the text said, but the uh, but it basically was a direction that God wanted us to do. And I said, really? You want us to teach young kids to drive? <laughs> I mean, because we, now we own a driver's education school in Winston-Salem and teach teens and adults to drive. And I'm like, ah, teach kids to drive? That sounds so not me as a banker. But actually, believe it or not, it's less stress. Um, <laughs> however, um, so this is where we are. And today, I want to talk to you just about a little bit about just responding to God. So when we went to camp, I didn't know these guys at all. I, they, didn't, they probably didn't know my name. I'm confident some of them still don't. But, uh, but I, I, I agreed to go as the bus driver and uh, go as a camp counselor. And I didn't know these guys, but what a great opportunity it was to be in the room and just get to know these guys. So day one, I said, well, let's get to know them a little bit. So we went through a list. I passed my notebook around. I take notes on everything. But uh, Garrett said he wanted to be maybe a police officer or a sheriff. Um, Alex um, Pryor said he wants to go into sports medicine. Jackson Beatty said possibly a history teacher. Um, Jarrett um, said he wanted to be in the United States Coast Guard. Um, Zach said he wanted to be a uh, veterinarian. Um, Michael Allen, man after my own heart, said he wanted to work at Chick-fil-A. Um, <laughs> Luke, of course, we, we all know what Luke wants to be, right? Luke wants to be a pilot, following in daddy's footsteps there. Um, Chandler said he wanted to be a teacher. Um, Brian said he's undecided. It's okay. You don't have to decide right now. Um, Gavin said he wanted to be in computer science or youth pastor. So, Gavin, it's awesome, man. See, day one, he wanted to be two different things. By the time he was finished with camp, he had already crossed off computer science. But you can do both. I am confident of that. Greg's an example of that. Um, Austin. What do you want to be, Austin? You want to be an actuary or an architect? Architect, there we go. Blake wants to be a PE teacher or a youth pastor. And Connor Rains wants to be a youth pastor. And so these guys are going, going on to their next steps. We need to pray for them. Because we need whatever they want to be here, they can shoot for those goals, and they can achieve those goals with Christ in their heart, following that all the way. Um, sorry, you asked me to give my testimony. I'm going to take some time here. Facebook, hold on. All right, so I need everybody to stand up because I'm going to teach you something we did at camp. All right, Connor Chandler, come on up here real quick. Come on, we don't have much time. Hurry it up. All right, so repeat after me. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, everybody repeat after me. I'm ready. To jump, to jump when God calls. When God calls. All right, that was our thing. Hold on one more time. I'm ready, I'm ready to, jump to jump when God calls. When God calls. Thank you. And I asked that question. Of, you can sit down. Thank you very much. All right. So we talked about this morning in our song, Leave Behind Your Regrets and Your Mistakes. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling everybody in here whether you hear it or not right now. Some of it, it's the sin in our lives that's keeping us from hearing that Jesus is calling. We need to put Jesus first. Our verse was Philippians 3.14, and it says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We talked about momentum when we were going to camp. Pastor probably doesn't want me to tell this, but I'm going to tell it. When we were going to camp, our bus going up the gorge, Decided to overheat. It's a Ford E450 with a 6.0. So if you need diesel mechanics in here, you know that's the engine you don't want to buy. However, what it turned out to be, it turned out to be just a little wire that was frayed. And so I think the lesson is here is how can we keep our momentum going if there's a wire frayed in our life? And that wire is the frayed wire is that sin that's going to keep us back. So we can all... Make a decision to just serve Christ no matter what. God called Heather and I to take these kids to camp. We don't know why. This is our busiest season. We worked 96 hours the week before just trying to get kids driven in cars so we could, we could take these kids to camp and, kids to camp and take these, this week off. Um, so no matter what, Christ is with us. He wants us to be ready to jump when he calls. So there's some needs 
and I know nobody's ever said this, so now that you've given me the mic, I'm going to say this. There's a little chart about these kids going to Costa Rica. The price had gone up. There's a budget because we have a man back here that doesn't take a salary as the youth pastor, puts it all into the youth budget. That's why the youth is going to Costa Rica. But I heard a story that this budget needs to be refilled. So somebody in here is being called to help refill that budget. They're about $10,000 short. They're going because the money was there, but we want to refill that budget. So you may be called $10, $100. You may be called to write a $10,000 check. I believe there's somebody in here that could do that. I was not asked to say this, by the way. So I'm probably stepping on some toes, but I'm not. Um, if we have a diesel mechanic, <laughs> um, great. There, here's your opportunity because we need to keep this bus in top, tip top shape. God gave us to it. If you like to clean, if you like to direct traffic in a few weeks here, we're going to get really organized on a hospitality team. And uh, so you may have a need to greet people, to direct traffic, to really create this environment where people can come in and find seats. Because I saw about four couples come in that couldn't find seats when I was up here in the choir. And I just wanted to step down, but I didn't want to interrupt anything. Um, you may be called just to smile. There's, a, there's at least three, three couples in this church that are retired that came in. To, when, I, when we started coming to this church about, I don't know, how long? Seems like forever. No, I'm kidding. It, uh, it seems like just a little while ago. But um, sorry, that's my sarcasm sticking in. Get out of there. Um, you may be called to change diapers. I'm not. Um, um, you may be called just to send a note to somebody. Um, we need to ask for prayer. Holden's, Holder's Garage that fixed our, fixed our um, bus. The reason why we were there is because that gentleman needed to see our testimony. And he, right before we pulled out of the driveway, he said to me, he said, well, I may give you a call sometime and ask for prayer. I said, I'm already praying for you. So lift up Mr. Holder. Holder or Holden? Hold, either way. God knows. All right, so where are we? I'm ready to jump when God calls. All right, just be ready because that voice is going to be there telling you to do something. Just do it. You don't know why you're doing it. I don't know why I'm doing it half the time, but just do it. Heather, did you want to share anything? I covered it all. Um, well, before I do finish, um, when I went to camp, I expected my Internet to be able to work. And um, it didn't very well, so my Bible was on my phone, and I couldn't access it. Um, so today, I have to confess my sins. So, Mr. Bill, if you would come up here, here's a testimony for the Gideons. Um, it, I think this will cover the cost of that Bible. No, this is for the Gideons specifically. He's like, I don't want to touch that money. So this goes to the Gideons because in that drawer in our... Uh, in our drawer at the, at the place, these Bibles were placed. And you know what? I had, a, I had scripture to refer to while I was at camp because the Gideons left it there. So um, there you go. That'll, that'll pay for a Bible and a half. All right. Thank you. Pam, you ready? Hey kids, it's that time again. If you're between the ages of first grade and sixth grade, please meet Miss Cindy over by the side exit for Kids Zone. And parents, please do not forget to pick your kids up after the service. Let's go. I've questioned certain circumstances, things I could not understand. And many times of trials, weakness blurs my vision. That's when my frustration gets so out of hand. Oh, but it's then I am reminded that I've never been forsaken and I've never had to stand one test alone no. and I look at all my victories and the spirit rises up in me and it's through the fire my weakness 
Praise the Lord. Well, today I, I don't have my bag with me because it would clash with my coat, so decided to leave that at home. Uh, just to let you know, uh, that was my wife's bag, and I do not carry things like that, but people take pictures when I do. And uh, Shane, you understand what I'm talking about. You carried your purse when we went to eat the other day, and that was awesome. Hey, take your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. Last two Sundays, we talked about um, really the, the body, how to uh, fight off the American idol because truthfully, our, we as a people, our tendency is to want to make self the idol and follow after self. And, and the Bible teaches us to consider others, you know, to really think about being a stumbling block and causing others to, to, to get their, uh, you know, uh, their spirit heard, or even be a, an offense to others. The truth of the matter is, you know, my wife and I had a, a conversation, and she said, you know, we live in a time where everybody is offended over everything. And so if, if you are trying your best to consider others, then you may not be able to do anything. Oh, I can't sing that song because it's got drums. Well, can I tell you the people that that you know, worry about drums being on a stage, but they love to listen to music that has drums in them, and it's just because they're here that it's offensive. That's crazy. Or, um, bless God, we can't sing you know, that song because it's new. There's a lot of new songs that are wonderful. I, I think for us, it, it's a matter of if it brings honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I wanted to kind of follow up with 
another group of messages that would tell you this, uh, how to have peace in life, how to not be offended over every little thing, how to, how to have joy for your journey, because truthfully, if everything is upsetting you and you get offended over every little thing, you're not enjoying life. You're worrying about so many things that really is not yours to worry about. Because if the person next to you is saved, who is the one person that makes the change in a person's life? Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Your job is not to be the Holy Spirit. Your job is to let the Holy Spirit affect you. Your job is to work on your beam, your, your, your splinter, and your eye. Because we can't, we can't change people. That's God's job. So how can you have joy today? You know, every time I go on a trip, I feel like I've left something behind. When we were, uh, when I traveled in Sang, we had the, the wonderful joy of being able to go on cruises, you know, because the, the group got to sing on a cruise. And so I was like, man, I am looking forward to that. In fact, I told him later on, I said, if you just want me to go and work the table, I don't have to sing. I'll just go work the table and you don't have to worry about it. I was trying to pitch, you know, a free cruise in my future. They didn't go for it. But, but when I was singing, I was able to go. And I remember we packed up. We, you know, they said, hey, you're driving the bus. I got to drive the 45 foot bus all the way down, pick up people along the way and, and then get down to Florida. And, and so we, you know, threw our stuff in the bus and De- Deanne was, was meeting me and, and she took the stuff, we put it in the, in, in a, in an area and they started throwing stuff in the bus and I was trying to keep my stuff together on a bed. Well, when you have a lot of hands moving, you know, sometimes things get misplaced. Well, we got to Florida and we're getting ready to go on the cruise and Deanne said, I don't see my bag. And I said, it's got to be there. I mean, we put it on the bus. It's got to be there. You probably just don't see it. I know it's, it's got to be there. And so, okay, if, if you say it's, it's got to be there, all right. And so we, we get on the cruise, and I'm so excited we're on the cruise. I am not even thinking about things, but Deanna is, is like, okay, I need to find, where's, where's my bag? They start bringing luggage in, in waves, and and it gets to the end of the night, and I'm like, I go down to the desk, and I'm like, hey, we're missing, a, we're missing a bag. And you know what I'm stressing over? Because my wife said, I don't see my bag. And I told her, it's probably, the, it's there. And now I'm going, oh my gosh, we have left her bag, all of her clothes, everything. She's got like the outfit she has on. And, and you just, I mean, it's not like they've got, you know, J.C. Penney on the cruise ship and Belk and some of those places. Uh, well, we didn't have her bag. We weren't prepared. Praise the Lord, there were people that heard our, our story, and, and, and it turned out to be a blessing because they were like, here's, here's $200, here's $100, here's $100. Deanne had like four or $500 to go shopping with uh, to get her clothes from all these people that felt sorry for her because of her dumb husband uh, leaving the bag. And it really wasn't, okay, it wasn't my fault because I, we didn't look, but somebody had thrown it in a place that we never put things. And we found it later on, and I felt so, so stupid. We stressed. We were worried. It was, it was, it was something on our mind. And I think when I when I look at this joy for our journey, that that a lot of times we are we're we're moving forward and we're forgetting some things. We're it's like it's like there's something that's missing that's creating some irritant, that it's creating some turbulence. And I believe if if we look at Romans chapter twelve, verse nine, that he gives us several things that that would begin to help us not forget and have joy and peace on our journey. First thing, in verse number 9, it says this. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not, rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep, be of the same mind worn toward another, mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate, be not wise in your own conceits, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men. 
Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, I know there's a lot of things that are going on in this portion of Scripture. And there's no way that we're going to, in the time that we have today, there is no way that we're going to get through all those things. And I didn't plan on getting through all those things. I plan on this being something that would encourage you over the next few weeks. So I want to, I want to talk about just that first couple of verses today on how to have peace in your life so you can have joy on the journey. Father, bless us. Use this message to encourage us. Lord, we don't, we don't want to live a life where we're so wrapped up in, in feared emotions and and worry and, and all of those things that, that sometimes we're plagued with. Help us to be set free today to enjoy what you have given us and what you've called us to. Lord, as Galatians talks about the liberty that you've given us, Lord, I pray that we stand in that. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, the first verse in verse number nine, he gives us the very, very first deal. And this, this is important. He said, let love be without dissimulation. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't even know what that word dissimulation is. And I was sitting there, I was thinking about that word dissimulation. And, of course, we know there is a word inside that that simulates. It's a simulation. And, and if, you've, uh, if you, you know, like to fly, they have flight simulators. And so you get in there, and, and a flight simulator is, is as close to the real thing is, is possible. It's, it's so you can, you can get acclimated to what it would be like to really fly. Now here's what I would tell you. That love in its purest form is all wrapped up in the person of Jesus Christ. Love in its purest form. He said, he said uh, God is love. So everything that we know about love really is, is all about Jesus who left his home, who came to earth, who sacrificially gave himself on a cross for you and I who did not really deserve it. Our sin is is what separates us from God. Our sin, it was so wrong, so, so wicked and evil, but yet all of it was placed on him. And so that love is really what we're trying to simulate, the real love. And so if you understand when he says, let love be without dissimulation, basically he's saying, be... Be the real deal. You know, there's so many people that talk about love and, and I love you and, and, and I love Jesus. But in reality, it's like where the scripture says, you know, um, with their lips, you know, they, they, they praise me with their lips, but their heart was far from me. That there are many times we say we love and we actually aren't being the real deal. There's some hypocrisy there. I, I will encourage you when you come to know Christ, and if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, be real. Do you know that's what, the, that's what a lot of people are looking for today? They don't want a church that is hypocritical. Now, let me just go ahead and say this. The church is full of hypocrites. And we hear that all the time. Well, I'm not going to go to that place because there are a bunch of hypocrites there. Well, I just would tell them, hey, Come on, one more won't make a difference. You know? Because guess what? As man, in many ways, we are hypocritical. And we have to be careful. As a church, if you say you love people, here's your challenge. And the challenge is, what do you mean by that? Do you mean certain groups of people? I love Jesus. What do you mean by that? Do you mean when it's convenient and comfortable to you? Because if you really love Jesus in the storm, when it's hard, when it's not convenient, when it's not comfortable, you'll still love Jesus. Or when you say, hey, you know, we love people. When somebody walks through that door and they don't look like you, and they may be somebody that you would not want to be around, would you still love them? You think about when Jesus came to earth and he is picking his disciples and he's gathering people together, what one person who he knew would have been not your choice, 
Judas, obviously. Who wants to have somebody in their group that stabs you in the back and you know it's getting ready to come, they're getting ready to betray you, they're going to turn you over and you're going to be crucified, but yet Jesus loved Judas. The people around Judas loved Judas. They had no idea that Judas was going to be the one to betray him. But in loving people, Jesus loved everybody. He loved Zacchaeus, who was, who was a, a thief and stole from people for his own gain, as in the guise of a tax collector. He loved the woman who came in and came behind him, who was weeping, who everybody in the room knew that she was a sinner, knew her, her, her testimony, knew that she was wicked, but Jesus loved her. And let me just tell you, Jesus loves you, and praise the Lord for that, but Jesus loves the person that's on the street today. Jesus loves the addict. Jesus loves the prostitute. Jesus loves the child molester. Jesus loves the homosexual. Jesus loves everyone. The challenge is, do you? Because a lot of times, here's the choosing. We love based on a criteria that we have set up. I mean, obviously, look at, look at even your, your relationships, the person you chose to be uh, your, your spouse or the person you are choosing to be maybe boyfriend or girlfriend or the person you would like to have as a, if you don't have a girlfriend, you would like this person to be your girlfriend. And usually that comes in, in this, I want, somebody, I, I want somebody beautiful. And if you're a lady, I want somebody handsome. I don't think anybody, you know, lays in bed at night and they're like, oh, when I get married, I want him to be short and fat. <laughs> oh, I, I just cannot wait for that. <laughs> Nobody does that. No girl, no, no, no guy says, ooh, Lord, just make her huge. <laughs> Nobody does that. You know what, we, we, you know what, do, what happens? The world points us to a direction and says, this is who you should love. You know, love the, love the athlete, love the tall person, love the good looking, love the tan, love this. And you know what? Jesus points us and says, you know, love people, love whoever. And, and then when it comes to the person, I honestly believe when you are choosing someone in life that you ought to be attractive. You ought to love them. I think that's, that's important. But I think more than just attraction, there needs to be a spiritual attraction. We need to encourage our young people that, hey, you should not date someone who doesn't believe in the Lord. You shouldn't date and marry someone who is, is, is in the world and, and is not saved and is living that. Because you know what? That's a struggle for you right from the get-go. You want to be able to worship together and, and have spiritual goals and a spiritual life together. When it comes to the church, we should love everybody. So when you're offended easily, oh, I can't believe those people are coming to our church. Shut your mouth. Because we want them to hear the word of God Amen. and have God change their heart. Or I, I can't believe this, or I can't believe that. Look, why are you being so offended over everything? Be the real deal. Because when you're the real deal, it, a friend loves at all times. Now, I believe that you should be able to speak the truth in love, right? Yes. That means, you know, no, not up in the air, hey, okay, can I talk to you? What, what do you want to talk about? Hey, I, I just don't under, understand this. Could you help me? It's how you approach those things. And so be a person who loves for real. I give you the second thing because I'm only going to be able to get like one or two more. When you're thinking about being the real deal, look at verse number two. And I probably missed something, but I think this is important to move to the next one. Look at the next part of that verse. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. You know, when I was in college, um, I first got there, and I'm so excited about uh, college because when you got there, it was like a day. You, you registered, everybody got in, you got your dorm, parents were there. And as soon as, as soon as it started and the parents left they would take all of the college students and they would go to a camp and it was kind of like this wonderful orientation, fun time. And I can remember, I mean, I'm a, I do everything like, ah, you know, I'm excited about it all. And so they're like, we're going to have like capture the flag. Oh man, 
I am in. Water balloon, capture the flag. And so we get with our team, and I mean, it's seniors and juniors and sophomores. I mean, everybody's there. And so we're talking, and it's like, how do we know? Because I don't know all you people, so we need to figure out how we can have a communication. And, and so I don't hit you with a water balloon, and you get put out, and I'm, it's friendly fire. So, so we come up with this. If, if we say, you know, if we say, what team are you, and, and you give a color, you're not on our team. Bam, we're going to hit you. Because there is a, a secret code that you're supposed to give. Well, I'm up on the roof of one of the cabins, and I've got like water balloons, and I'm ready to go, and I'm, people would walk by, and I'm like, bam, ha, 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 you know, because they have to go to timeout. They can't tell where I'm at. So I would be like, hey, what team are you? And before, you know, if, if they would say the word, we're good. But if they pause at all, bam. So here comes these two guys. One guy's walking like this. And one guy's big, tall, you know, pale looking guy. And they're, and they're walking like this. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, what team are you? Nothing. They didn't even look at me. It was like, hey, what team are you? I said it again. Hey, what team are you? And they're going like this and they're walking. And I was like, bam, 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 bam. Then they look up and they're like, I realized that I just pelted deaf people. That, that they were, they, we had two deaf people in, in, in the college, and they had no idea what I was saying. I'm screaming at them, and, and, and to come to find out, they were on my team. I put two people out because I did not know. Here's the thing. Look what he says. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. You got to know who your enemy is. Do you know that a lot of times in our life, we are making enemies out of people who are not our enemies. We are making things bad that are not bad. And you've got to know because if you don't, you, you may hurt and, and call someone who loves Jesus or who maybe do things a little different to feel bad about but what they're doing. So it, I want to point to you a passage of Scripture and we'll, we'll stay right here. and finish. Look at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Know your enemy. Luke chapter 9, we, we want to look at verse number 49. Jesus has been you know, speaking and teaching and leading his disciples. And he talks about... Uh, who's going to be the greatest and that's kind of what the disciples thoughts were and he's talking about a child and verse 49 John answered and said master we saw one casting out devils in thy name I want you to see some things about the story they're casting out devils in, in thy name and we forbade him because he followeth not with us they, they were doing some ministry in, in your name and we told him stop and Jesus said to him, forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. Oh, you, hey, you're, you're not with us. You're not at our church. You're not here, and so you need to stop. You're, not, you're, you're doing this in Jesus' name, but you need to stop. You realize there are a lot of ministries going on around us today that are doing things in the name of Jesus, and we don't want them to stop. We want them to keep going because even though they're not here and they're not a part of us, they're still with us. You know, this is not a competition of ministries. This is, this is a blessing to, to be able to serve the Lord. And, and you know what? There, there, it seems like there's a lot of swapping going around. I, I, if somebody leaves here, I want them to go to a place and be able to serve the Lord and be plugged in and, and that their ministry or, or their usefulness keep going on. But we, we don't need to make them an enemy. In fact, he goes on further and it says this. Uh, it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and he sent messengers before his face. They went and entered in a village of the Samaritans, people they normally uh, would talk to and they, they didn't get along with, to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. So it was like, hey, we know that your, your heart's not here. You're, you're wanting to go to Jerusalem. Don't even worry about coming here. And, and when the, his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, would thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. 
You ever knocked on a door and somebody slammed the door in your face and you walked away and maybe in your thought, in your mind, you're like, I wish fire would just come down from heaven and burn them up. How dare they slam the door in my face? The reality is this. Lost people are good at being lost. You know, we want to we wanna scream and, 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 and be ah at, at people who have no knowledge of Jesus Christ or who have not been, been saved and, 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 they're, and they're spiritually in the dark. There is never a time where you should, should rail or, or speak hateful or angry to a lost person because they did not receive you, because they don't know Jesus. Because when you do that, whether it be at a restaurant and you show your tail or whether it be somewhere and, and you, are, you, are, you just you act out in anger, you know what you have done, especially if they ever find out that you're a Christian, you have cut an opportunity to share the gospel. And so you've got to know who your enemy is. He says, abhor that which is evil. We've got to understand this is evil. This is bad. Sin is evil. Wickedness is evil. Certain songs are not. Churches who do things differently than us, they're not. And so he says, look, understand who your enemy is and then cleave to that which is good. I'm going to hitch my wagon to Jesus Christ. I'm going to cleave to that which is good. Because if I am real with people and I really love people and I hate sin, I hate what it does, I hate evil, and I'm going to cleave to that which is good... I'm, not, I'm starting this process where I don't have a lot of time to get upset at, at, at a lot of things. I'm, I'm focused on the good things. I'm focused on, on things that are, are supposed to be good. Look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. It's in the New Testament. Remember I told you, you've got to know who your enemy is, what's evil, and what's good. He said, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Can I get you to do that? I hate sin, and I love righteousness. I hate wickedness, and I love serving the Lord. And he says, therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Hey, preacher, what do you mean? How can I have joy in my life? How can I, can I have gladness and, 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 and just live a life of peace? Then hate sin and love serving the Lord. It's simple. If you hate wickedness and you hate sin and you choose to love the Lord and the things of the Lord and lift up the Lord, he says God will anoint you with the oil of gladness, which really, if you want to shorten that, he will give you joy above people. Do you understand? That's why we as Christians, we should be people of joy. Because if you are a Christian, you should hate sin. You should hate evil. You should hate wickedness. And know what the difference is. And then choose to love the Lord. And when you do that, there is a smile on your face. It's like you've gotten things in the right way. You're not going to forget, hey, I, I've got everything that I need for this journey. And I'm going to have joy. I'm not worrying about what I've left behind. Because I don't need it. So today, and I, I know I, I had two more points to go, but I want to encourage you, please do not miss this, because there are so many people that get offended over everything. There's so many people that are worried about what other people are doing, and you should worry about yourself. And if you see something going on, guess what you should do? Pray for them. And then if you have a relationship with them, then you have the, the opportunity to go to them if you are offended and you take somebody with you and you follow Matthew 18 and you want to keep your brother because a brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city. See, on one side, like I told you last couple of weeks, I don't want to be a stumbling I want to consider you. But at the same time, you need to consider me. And see, if we consider one another, 
You see how that works to where, you know, even if you do something wrong, you're not bothering me. You know why? Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Man, if I, if I love the word and love Jesus, and I love righteousness, and I hate evil, there ain't too, there's, there's not a lot that's going to bother me. And let me ask you this. Think about this. Why would this world bother you one ounce? This is not your home. Why would what somebody is doing bother you one ounce? Who is in control of it all? Jesus Christ. If I lift him up, which is what I'm supposed to do, if I am to spread the truth, which is what I'm supposed to do, what goes on around me, it may be sad to see, but I'm not going to let it offend me because you know what it's doing? It's moving us right ahead to the rapture of the church. And so I'm going to be working to spread the gospel. Jesus Christ, he's going to fight our battles, right? Jesus Christ is going to take care of the church, right? And the Holy Spirit's going to take care of my brother and sister and, and kind of convict them if, if they're not doing right. So today, what you're supposed to do is just be real and know the difference between evil and good and always choose the good. And if you do that, you're going to start to experience joy. You're going to, God's going to give you and anoint you with the oil of gladness. Some people need that. Some people need a smile. You ever met somebody that you just wish that they understood how good God was? And that they could smile knowing everything is great. So let me encourage you, the next couple weeks, be here because there are several points on that that would be an encouragement to you. Because life is tough. And there are a lot of, there's a lot of things going around, a lot of negativity, a lot of things that you can just bring you down. I'm trying to encourage you to come above it. Be real. You're here, love real. Love Jesus. Don't just say it, show it. Don't just say you love people, love people. And know the difference between the enemy and who's on your team. They may do things a little different. But if they know Jesus Christ, they're on our team. And we need to encourage one another. Hey, if you're, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you're not going to know peace. You're not, you're not, you, you cannot really fully embrace and know joy. You, uh, you may have happiness and happiness is, is circumstantial. Happiness is this. When everything is, oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. And as long as everything's going your way, you're happy. But what happens when it's storming and you can't say it's a beautiful morning? What happens when everything is going, it seems like, the way of the devil you know, you can still have joy if you're saved, but you can if you're unsaved because happiness is circumstantial. So let me encourage you today. If you really want true joy, choose Jesus. Choose peace. I like every head bowed, every eye closed. Jesus gave the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I don't know about you, but I love being saved. I love having Jesus Christ live inside of me. And not everything goes my way. And, and sometimes I, I fail in joy because I let those things bother me when I shouldn't. If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I'm going through a tough time. I've got some things that's coming at me. And, and you're right. I, I've not let... I've not given my life to joy. I, I'm letting these things bother me. And I should just trust the Lord and be real and choose him and know that everything is in his care. Preacher, would you pray for me? I'm struggling with my joy. I want that joy. Anybody like that preacher, pray for me. I'm struggling with joy. I see those hands. 
than just letting the Lord have it. And maybe you're someone that you're, you're worried and letting everything just bother you. Could we say today that we're just going to let the Holy Spirit do his work? You got somebody that's not doing right? Just let the whole, turn them over to the Holy Spirit. You got a friend that, you know, struggling? Speak the truth in love, but turn them over to the Holy Spirit because he can do a better job than we can. And how, you, how many would say, preacher, I'm just going to trust the Holy Spirit to take care of the people I love that are bothering me right now. I'm going I'm to just give them over to the Holy Spirit. Anybody like that? I'm going to just give them over to the Holy Spirit. Let, let the Holy Spirit have them. He's going to work on them and embrace joy. Hands down. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you say, preacher, pray for me. I do want to have that joy you're talking about. I do want to have the peace in knowing Jesus. Would you pray for me? Anybody like that? Pray for me, preacher. I don't know. Nobody's looking at you. Just me. I just want to pray for you. Anybody? Preacher, pray for me. I don't know I'm saved. I'd like to have that joy. Let's all stand to our feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, Lord, today, we, we really need to be encouraged. We really need to know that you are on our side, and we need to know who the enemy is. We shouldn't battle one another. We shouldn't be angry with one another. We should, we should allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Lord, let, help us to be real and not just say things, but mean things and, and show things. Not just say we love you, but really love you. Lord, I pray that we have joy for our journey, that we're not letting happiness and circumstances be the case, but Lord, we're just giving our life to you, choosing righteousness so that we'll be anointed with oil of gladness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As Andrew leads us in a verse of song, nobody's looking around. Maybe you've got a struggle going on. Just come on. Just come to the altar. If you're hurting, you're broken within, Andrew leads us in a song, you slip out, come. Are you hurting and broken you need joy today? Within, Peace. Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin. Jesus is Jesus calling. Jesus is calling. Come to the end of yourself. Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Would you respond? Oh, come to the altar. Come on. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling Come to the altar The Father's arms are open More coming, wide. you can come on Forgiveness was born with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior. Sing it out. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Oh, what a Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen.
if you're going on that missions trip, come to the altar. If you're going to Costa Rica, you come on down. We want to pray over you. You come to the altar. Was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Now you come, church. Let's come. Let's pray over them. With the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we have such a fine group down front that have a heart for you and they want to go and, and see you use them to make an impact for your kingdom in Costa Rica. Lord, there are discouraged pastors there. There are, I know of one whose wife has cancer. I pray they can go and encourage Pastor Jose. Lord, that they would encourage Pastor Jeremy who's trying to start churches and Bible studies so that, the, that people might be saved and break free from the chains of, of addiction and drugs and all the things that they're facing there. Lord, I know they're going to a place of poverty, but they're carrying the great riches of the gospel. So Lord, I pray that you would anoint them and, and use them, or that they would empty self, that this would not be just a trip to enjoy, but a trip to bring joy to people who are without. I thank you for the hearts of them, and I thank you for the heart of this church who has given. And Lord, thank you for everybody that has taken part in this trip. Bless them, anoint them, fill them with your power. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Thank you so much. You can go back to your seats. do appreciate you being here today. And I know it's, it's a little bit late. We, can I tell you our hearts? We don't want to uh, have a, a service continually that's late, but we do want to have a service that if the Holy Spirit is moving, that we do not stop it and that we let it go. And, and that's, that's really, you know, our desire. So many, you know, we got to cut off at 12 o'clock because people start looking at their watch and they get so upset because now Applebee's is crowded and packed and Cracker Barrel and all those places. And it's really not about that. It's really about what the Holy Spirit is doing. And when he is moving in, among the congregation, God's doing some great things. And I know when you pull up on the, the, the property, you see busyness. But I hope when you come in here, you feel the Holy Spirit. Um, am I missing any um, things tonight? We have a like uh, the summer service, but a thank you for all those who are involved in VBS. 27th. The 27th, the Crenny movie is going to be here. There's going to be on Facebook, and you'll start to see announcements for that. Uh, that's on the 27th, you know, so make plans for that day. Uh, also, uh, we just want to thank you for allowing your to, teens to come with us. And, and there are many more opportunities that we're going to make for them to grow in the Lord. And, and so we're looking forward to what God is doing. Brother Matt, do we have anything else? All right, well, let's just be dismissed in a word of prayer. Thank you for being here. God bless us. Lord, help us to go from here and, and really just look for the joy in life and the opportunity to make an impact for the kingdom. And Lord, if we're busy about serving you, we're busy about those things, Lord, we don't have time to worry about what, all these other things and, and who's doing what. Lord, we want to trust you and live for you. Lord, give us joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.